I'll start off here for today's practice uh, as we get going since we're kind of doing this a little bit reverse order. As far as guys being out, so Eddie Jackson has a hamstring. It's something that we're not overly concerned. Um, he, he injured it while he was working out recently, so uh, you won't see him out there in practice. Uh, Tevin Jenkins has some back tightness. So, uh, you know, uh, for, for us, that, that just kind of came on there in rookie camp. <clears throat> so we're, you know, working with that day to day. Jermaine Effetti uh, has a hip flexor. He tweaked it this morning in, in the conditioning test. Uh, so he won't be out there today. We're, we're checking him out and just seeing where things are. We feel pretty good about it as far as sometimes you get those in these conditioning tests. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that with our guys, which was a, they did a great job. Uh, limited today will be Robert Quinn with a, a back where he's going to be out there. Uh, we're just bringing him along uh, slow and, and – uh, you know, just going to pull him back just a little bit in some of the team periods. But he's, again, he was out there in rookie camp. I thought he looked really good. So um, arrow up for him. And same with Bilal Nichols. Bilal has a toe, uh, very similar with, as far as the tempo with Robert. Just bring him along slow and pull him back just a little bit in these um, this 777 team period that we're doing today. Um, we can, if you have more questions, that we can hit that. But t this morning, uh, I do want to give a lot of credit to these players. Um, two reasons. Number one, uh, this is the first time in a while that I can remember our um, when, when they do their their weigh-ins. Like we we have our our guys put in a lot of work here in the summer, and you never know how that's going to be when they come back. But really great shape. And then second, that with they they did awesome in the conditioning test. So when you have that to start camp, uh, it's unfortunate with you know with the, the deal there with the hip flexor with your main, but. From other ones I've been a part of, that's, you know, they did a really good job. So uh, we're going to head out to this practice today, and it's going to be uh, a bunch of little team periods that are scripted for um, uh, one side of the ball. So if you see some interceptions that are out there on, on offense here or there, it's, some of this stuff is scripted just to get these guys to run around. But uh, we're ready to go. So with that, I'll open it up. Matt, this is a normal length training camp overall, but in comparison to last year, it's a double curious what that means for you as a coach in terms of evaluating, experimenting, being able to take advantage of twice as much length this year in camp to, to figure out who you are. Sure. When I was going back, Dan, and looking at the schedule um, when this first came out, knowing the dates that we could start and finish, it was almost equivalent to 2018. I think it was around close to 55 days that we have. And um, what that does for us as coaches is it allows us to script the practices and get different situational football. Uh, but also have those preseason games and have a lot of individual drills uh, for our guys. And then the teaching part of the installs at night, I think it just gives us more time to not have to go so fast. So I like it. Matt, with Robert Quinn, is it the same injury from a few months ago ongoing? And do you have concerns about the amount of time he's going to need to get ready for the season? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it is. It's the same, and I think that for him, I don't have concerns. I feel good, and, you know, we weren't sure with all these guys when they have some knick-knack injuries where they're at. And, you know, uh, with Robert, um, right now with his health and with this back that he has, we feel, we feel good that he's going to get through this training camp and be pretty healthy and, and strong. So we just got to, day by day, just keep getting him stronger and stronger and getting him where he needs to be. If I can rephrase the second part of my question, I guess, um, how important is the time or the practice reps going to be for him? Yeah. Because it seemed like that was an issue for him last year. It, it, they're they're going to be important, and he knows that. So, um, like today, for instance, he's still going to get quality reps. Now, we don't have pads on. It's just – but for the speed of him getting out there, the tempo coming off the ball, uh, I feel like he's in a good place. But we, we certainly need to get him – we want to get him going. We get pads on and going. We need to get those full speed reps. What was the rapport like last year between you and Robert? I know you talked to us about just about seeing him around in Capture, but just watch him go through a season like he never had had in his career. Mm -hmm. What was kind of that like for you? Yeah, it, well, for all these guys, um, they're so internally driven and motivated to have you know great years and be successful. And it was last year was just such a, a weird, different year because of not just meeting new teammates, but you know, just the things you can and can't do with, with uh, things off the field, meeting people and um, just with, with family and stuff. And I just think, like, for all of us, it was different. Um, for him specifically, uh, I just know that he holds himself to, to, you know, 
to a lot of high standards. And um, he knows that we all, as coaches, want to do everything we can to get him back to what we know he can be. And so there's, there's uh, kind of the motto that we talked about yesterday. Like, that's what happened last year is in the past for all of us coaches and players. And he's really more excited than anything. And he's, a, he's, had a, he's been in a great mood and great person, great state of mind to, to really get going this season. Matt, when you, you told us in the offseason that you would interview a lot of defensive coordinators. Mm -hmm. What sort of in, uh, input did you receive from all those guys about how they would use Khalil, how they would use Robert? And, and, and did any of that influence kind of what you guys will do this year? Yeah, I thought that there were some really good ideas from the, the defensive coordinators that I interviewed, including Sean. And I'd be foolish not to take some of that and use it. And I think that's, for me, I put that kind of in the continuing ed department for me as a head coach is, hey, if somebody has an idea or something that they do at another place um, that works and that's beneficial, do it. And, and there are some, some things and some brainstorming that I've done with those interviews that, I, that I'm using and will use. Um, so, you know, there's I, I was really impressed with a lot of the info I got. When you did talk to all of those guys, did you have to ask yourself, okay, what sort of defense do I want to be? I mean, was it a, uh, an X's and O's thing, a personality thing? What influenced the decision about you? No, there was a little – you know, the the personality thing is one thing with with who you are and how you'll fit and how can you teach how can you build these relationships with the players, you know being here three years and then with you know having two coordinators in three years on defense, and now to have a third in four years on defense that plays a part of what these players too like what, like what kind of relationships do they have with a guy that's been on staff or a guy that's from another team that like especially with the off season that we have and, and how, how things go. Is it learning a whole new scheme? Is it, you know, a guy like Sean where Sean's here and they know who is, who he is as a person and they know the scheme that he likes to run and th there's going to be tweaks here or there on different stuff. But um, in the end, I think it's like anything, you just kind of feel it and you know it. And, and with Sean, it was, uh, it was really easy. Yeah, Golden played at a high level last time he played, but it's been about, what, 18 months since yeah. he played in the game. What are your expectations for him, and how realistic is it to expect him to revert to basically pick up where he was when he was a Pro Bowl alternate? Yeah, it's going to take some time. Uh, these guys just putting the pads on and those helmets and, uh, you know, football. Get, getting into football shape, uh, it's not hard, but it just takes a little bit of time. And then what he does as a player, uh, I, I feel good, like, again, having all the time that we have here in training camp, let him at his own pace get back into it. The number one concern is when they get here, how do they look? Do they look overweight? Do they look out of shape? Uh, and he, he looks great, and he do, does not look out of shape, and he did great in the conditioning test today. So that's a heck of a start. What about the psychology of it, Matt? Like just, just being away from the game as long as he had, has been. Yeah, that's, I think everybody's a little bit different on how they handle that. Uh, but he's, he's been out for a long time. So uh, for I don't I don't necessarily know what he did while he was away and how much football I do know he watched our games uh, from from talking to him, uh, so that was that was good to see. Um, but you know Eddie's a he's a he's a quiet introverted guy and we're all different and but for him uh, I think I don't know how much he's going to tell us other than he's ready to go ready to play and he's just going to let his actions speak. Did it go down to the wire for you to actually know? To, live, to know for sure that he was going to be here because Ryan seemed even yeah when you uh, got 100 yesterday yeah, well when you all asked us that yesterday we had no idea and then I got I got a text message that he's here and and so I I, I did the emoji thing with the thumbs up and so I was <laughs> I was ready to go and and uh, um, and then I hit it back with the exclamation point the double whammy exclamation point so <laughs> it was good so um, we like having good players show up and good people and Eddie's a huge part of this defense and so yesterday was a good day. So you, went, you went weeks, yeah. months leading up to yesterday wondering is he going to retire? Is you he... know how hard it is to get a hold of Eddie Goldman? <laughs> it's hard. I believe you. Yeah, it's hard. But he has his ways. Like again, we told you months ago we, we talked, he was in the building and we talked to him and, and uh, you know, uh, he was here and so you just never know. I mean, anybody can do whatever they want, show up or not show up. There's nothing we – like, I was just hoping when he didn't come to minicamp that he'd be here at training camp. And because – and he did. He's here. So we can put that off to the side. Who was that a, who was that a text to? Who were you texting back? Um, 
Do you really want to know? Yeah. Uh, it was Faber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know you've said this before. The conditioning test? Yeah. Oh, shuttle, what exactly is the conditioning Yeah, so they're all a little bit different in different places. For us, um, for us it was more of 60-yard um, uh, sprints, you know, and then we do a bunch of them with some rest in between. I think there's a – you know, you got to – you gotta. We want to be somewhat smart too with guys coming. Out. I mean, we have the deal with Jermaine, um, and I know Jermaine's been working hard in the off season. It's just unfortunate, but I think he'll be okay. Uh, but you you want to you want to. It gives you a little bit of a barometer as to like where are these guys at, and who who are the outliers. Like who's number one? Who's killing it? Who's coming in first every time? And then who are the guys that are can't make it? And and uh, we had a lot of guys at the same spot. There wasn't a lot of. Guys, way in the front, and there wasn't, there was nobody in the way back. I mean, they were all coming across at the same. Man, because, uh, man, because, uh, go ahead. Because Eddie Goldman is so reclusive, are, are you, are you convinced he's, a, he's, all in mentally coming back? Yeah, I have no worries about that. I really don't. I mean, when when these guys show up and they're here, I think again, them being here sh sh proves to him that, uh, or to us, that he's here. I mean, it's, he's. Uh, I really don't have any worries with that at all. Mac isn't yeah, a guy to. Mac I'll is, come back. Mac isn't a guy to make excuses, and I'm sure he's not a guy to look for any of them from you. He was on the injury report a lot last season. When you went back and evaluated the season, how much did that affect him? I mean, he's, he's not on the injury report for no reason. With Khalil? Yeah. With yeah. Um, well, you know, these guys are getting hit every single play and collided, and, and so they're going to have bumps and bruises and things that just kind of over time, I think, grind on them. Yeah, but you don't, you don't get on the injury report with a bump or a bruise. No, I know, I know, but but I think for him, um, like that, that's probably all, all the players that you that you look at. They're going to go through these these times where they're beat up, and one part might be beat up more than the other that you might not know about or I don't know about, and they don't say anything about it. They just they're sore. You know, it's something that's not specific. And it, I guess it would be more of like wear and tear, you know, when you're, you're – so we want to make sure, and he knows this, that we do everything we can with the prevention side um, of, of the health and, and of their bodies, and Khalil specifically, you know, and then um, making sure that we also help him out schematically. You know, he's going to get doubled and tripled. How do we help alleviate that with him so that when he does get singled, he, he can have more chances to win? Coach, the, the lion's share of catches for Cole really came in the last five five games last season. And then Jimmy led your team, I think, in receiving touchdowns. How do you anticipate using your tight ends specifically? Sure. Um, it was really neat getting to learn and see Cole Komet develop last year. Uh, early on, the first half of the season, he's always had the mental side, and we were just trying to figure out with Jimmy, with both of those guys being new to the system, like what their roles are and how it's going to fit. Now with Cole, uh, his, his role is definitely going to increase. And um, he's, he is, he's the type of kid that we have to sometimes protect him from himself because he wants so much. He wants to practice these, every route. He wants to practice every block that he can do on the edge with the tackles and whatever that is. And so you love that about him. And we just, now that we knew, now that we know like what he can handle, it makes it a lot easier to be able to use him. So he's going to certainly get, be used more than he was last year. And then, you know, again, with a guy like Jimmy, who's been in this league for a long time, who's older, but still takes phenomenal care of his body. We'll have a role for him too. Yeah, we got to talk with Andy Dalton yesterday, and he seems really comfortable with what he's up against. You know, rookie quarterback coming in. What have you observed in him since he got him in the building, and kind of his mentality and his mindset with this whole deal? Just exactly that. He's he's um, you know, people talk about like is, is he's just he's a true professional that's easy to deal with that knows his knows his role, knows why he's here, wants to be a a, a phenomenal quarterback, great leader, and great teammate, and. You know, when you have guys like that, like right away, um, you know, from the moment he's been here, he just wants to be the best quarterback he can be for the Chicago Bears, period. That's all he wants to do. And we all have histories with different teams uh, in different uh, years, different scenarios that played out. And he is doing nothing but looking forward to everything that he can do with being around a bunch of good players and teammates here in Chicago. He's really, really super excited to have an opportunity um, to go out and show what he can do. And so that's that's all we can ask for. That's, that's you know, when we signed him, that's what we asked for. When Tevin, when Tevin gets clearance. 
Go ahead. When, when Tevin gets clearance to get back on the field, what do you see as the biggest challenges to him getting comfortable on the left side where he doesn't have a ton of experience? Right. Um, it's going to be most likely in the pass game. Uh, making sure with those sets and understanding Juan's techniques that he uses, taking the techniques that he learned in OTAs, putting the pads on and doing it against some pretty good players there on the edge with Robert and Khalil and those one-on-ones all the time. So once he does that, I think the run game uh, will be a little bit easier for him. And, and I do believe that that's one of his strengths from watching tape. I think he's a, uh, I think he's really good in the run game. So when we get him back there, that part. And then also, too, like the communication with uh, all the, the, the IDs and the protection checks. Coming off of two eight and eight seasons, mm -hmm. what do you want the team's mentality to be as you start camp here? I mean, you and some of the guys on this roster, Alan Robinson said it yesterday, have tasted 2018, winning the division, being being a competitive team, and they want that back. What what do you want their mindset and attitude to be when they hit the field today to start this season? Just a lot a lot of focus. I want them laser focused in the point of I want no complacency is something that we've talked about. Uh, it's easy to have these rah-rah speeches on day one of training camp, and and uh, but the focus is going to be on on making sure that we don't get complacent in any area. That we're great teachers as coaches, but big picture for for us is is really making sure. I think when you talk about like philosophically where we're at, you're going to feel you're going to see and feel a team that practices hard. And, and so that emphasis that we're talking about is going to be on a different level than what you all have seen in three years here with me. So the practices that we have are going to be fast. There's going to be no walking around. They're going to, every rep is going to count. And you might see in 10 reps, you might see a starter get four reps. But those four reps are going to be 100 miles an hour. And if they're not, they won't be on the field. And, and so we're going to take that and we're going to use that for Sundays. And Sundays are going to be easy. But that's where I, I talk to you guys, like, how can I get better? I, I don't think I was good enough in my area at being a head coach and, and, and overseeing practices and the tempos of practices. It's going to be different this year. Matt, you yeah, talked about moving the uh, from, the, from the quarterbacks or from, from, from Justin, yeah. yeah? No, just what he's what he did in rookie camp was coming in and out of the huddle. Now the next part is going to be putting it – uh, together in full team situations, right? So when you got guys in your lap, you're not just patting the ball back there uh, on seven on seven, being able to make throws that anyone can make. What happens when it gets a little dirt, dirty in the pocket? What happens when there's people around your knees? What happens when they they disguise a coverage post snap? And and then more than any anything, what happens when you make a bad play? Do you learn from it? Like like yesterday. Um, he had a bunch of good throws yesterday in rookie camp and, and threw a bunch of touchdowns, and we did, it was red zone. But he also th threw what looked like a pick, but later I ended up seeing he dropped it on defense. Uh, but right away, he instantly knew, hey, I should have, I wish I would have thrown it over the top and not tried to force it in there on a laser throw. So that's, he sees that right away. That was right after the play. So stuff like that in team elements, is he still seeing that? And is the game slowing down to him? talked about moving Khalil around to try to mitigate some of those doubles and triples. Uh, how big of a part of your interviews with these defensive coordinators uh, was that? Was, okay, what will you do to unlock Matt? There, there, yeah, there, there's parts of that. Um, but to tell you the truth, Pat, I think, uh, like, a lot of people know that. These, off these uh, offensive coordinators understand that every day they walk in on a Tuesday for the game plan, they always highlight this guy or that guy. We got it. This guy cannot affect or wreck the game. And so teams know, okay, they're going to move them around. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Um, but there are some things that you can take that some different ideas that people have that are intriguing. And there, there, were, there were some things that, that I thought was pretty good that some of the guys talked to, including ideas that Sean has. And so um, we're not going to probably show very much of that, but eventually we'll, we, we will. Load management has not been an issue in the NFL uh, thing for, in the NFL for obvious reasons, but with 17 games and still only one bye, even if it's not part of your plan now, could you see that down the road for coaches like yourself at least considering that with if the situation's right and you got players you might want to rest or whatever? And um, probably the, the only time that would probably happen is like with your record maybe in a situation at the end of the year. But yeah, so maybe you, you might see some of that. But I don't, I don't necessarily. S me, my belief, I don't see that happening with us. But I, I don't. I got to be careful because I've never been through this before, so I don't know exactly. So we'll, I guess we have to go through this first one and see, get a feel for it. Yeah, just curious, uh, 
how, how different does this feel, the start of this, compared to where you were a year ago, having to start it up and, as you said, more condensed everything? Just how, how are you personally, you know, approaching this? Yeah, um, well, for me, versus just last year, there was such a major – everything was so different last year because everything was new for the first time. There was no template. And we all were looking at each other like I'm looking at y'all now with the masks on and stuff. Like it's just different. There's no facial expressions. There's no, no relationships. Yeah, there are. You just can't see them. But like for instance, last year on today, we could, I didn't have a conditioning test because I didn't know – you know, you had to be careful of are the guys going to come in and all of a sudden you have seven, eight, nine guys that, that didn't have a place to work out, couldn't go anywhere last year and work out. They were overweight, et cetera. So we were careful of that. So just as one example, that was one issue. But I, I feel um, really good in regards to where our organization is, not just from the coaching staff, but the support staff, the equip, you know, with team ed as equipment managers, the video, was super. I mean, everybody in here, we've all kind of been through this. We're all working together. And we had a two-hour and 45-minute team admin meeting last night. And those are never fun. But, I mean, it went like this. And everybody, it just feels, it feels good. You know what I mean? So um, we're almost close to back to normal. And, and I think that's making things a little bit easier for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you out there. Yeah.